I'll let me introduce myself once again. My name is Julia and uh, I'm responsible for PR and advertising at Nivasoft, which is a leading casual game developer and distributor in Russia. Today I'm going to break three common stereotypes about the Russian game market. I'm going to tell you uh, about how many people in Russia already know about the existence of the internet, how many of them play video games, and how much money they can bring you. But uh, before I start with the uh, figures and graphs, uh, I'd like to tell you a story, a few words about myself. Nivasov's headquarters is in St. Petersburg, and um, that's where I live now. But I was born in a small town in Siberia. It was very cold there, so that's why I had to start drinking vodka since I was four. <laughs> I usually had to drink it for breakfast, and afterwards I would go to the forest to hunt bears. I killed bears with my bare hands, you know? And if some of them stayed alive, I would take them home, and we would drink vodka and play balalaika together. Okay, now please, raise your hands those who thought that it was absolutely typical and standard for a Russian, especially from Siberia, though you couldn't probably believe what I was saying. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> well, actually, you know, it's my favorite story. I told you like a million times because I love it because it totally meets people's expectations when they hear the mysterious word Russia. But, do you, but does anybody actually know what really goes on there? <laughs> do you know what opportunities it has and how you can seize them? In 10 minutes, everybody in this room will be able to say yes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, stereotype number one. People usually believe that there are not many internet users in Russia. Is it really so? Well, uh, right now we have about 143 million people living in Russian Federation. How many of them actually use the internet? In 2005, we had about 18 million internet users and I already was one of them. In 2011, we have 60 million internet users. Well, 60 million. Is it much or little? It depends. If we compare it to the US, for example, well, not that much. In the USA today, there are 239 internet, million internet users. Well, but if we compare it to Germany, for example, not that little. If we look at France, well, not little at all. So, how many users are active internet users? In Russia, we have 46 million active internet users. And we also have, well, we have 38 million gamers. This is more than in France, this is even more than in Germany. And even if we look at another promising emerging market, like Brazil, for example, Russia still wins. But, you know, I think I already can see a question in your eyes. Okay, so there is much internet in Russia, or many gamers. But does anybody of them actually pay anything? Stereotype number two. People think that Russian players are not payers. Is it true? Well, according to the latest National Gamer, Gamer Survey made by New Zoo in 2011, this spring, in Russia, there are 20 million players who actually pay for video games. Well, the average paycheck is not that big yet, but I think you all know that the first purchase is very, very important. And there are 20 million people who actually already have the experience of paying for video games. I think that is pretty huge. It's very difficult to give any estimations, but in 2011, 
the total revenue is going to be more than 1 billion US dollars as the whole game market in Russia. I like the example about social games. Uh, in 2010, the annual revenue was uh, about 70 million US dollars. It was plus 230% in comparison to 2009. The market is growing really, really fast. And um, by 2015, they promise it's going to be up to one and a half billion dollars. And this is just social games. Okay, what we have now. So there are many internet users in Russia, there are many gamers in Russia, some of them even pay. What else can prevent you from expanding into Russia? I think this is stereotype number three. The Russian market is believed to be very difficult to enter because of various problems. Some language issues, some cultural backgrounds, some monetizations and billing stuff, and well, uh, many people are afraid of Russian mafia, whatever. <laughs> I have to be honest, uh, there are some problems, and there can be some differences. Uh, another example from social games, I think you all know Mafia Wars on Facebook, probably everybody played it. Well, I myself played it once or twice, but I, every day I receive a lot of requests from my friends. I still try to resist. One of the most popular games on the social, on the Russian social network, Kontakte, is called The Prison. Actually, yeah. So you are in jail and uh, you have to become respectable and so you have to make different tattoos and uh, earn money. It's quite fun, actually. So I think the difference here is obvious. But you are wrong if you think that these differences are that huge. If we look at top 10 of the most popular games on Facebook and on Russian social networks, we'll see that they're pretty much the same. So, for example, there is City Wheel, and we have Megapolis, uh, Frontier Wheel, we have Newlands, Farm Wheel, we have all sorts of farms. Poker is popular everywhere. My point is that, that people are still people, and if you have good stuff, good content, it will be successful in Russia or elsewhere. Well, some of these games might be clones, some of them are not, but anyway, good games will be successful anywhere. Another example is from the, uh, from the casual game sector. Uh, our Nivasov's title, My Kingdom for the Princess, uh, it was a bestseller in Russia on our Russian portal, nivasov.ru, and it was also a hit in the US and all other countries. Because, uh, oh, so it got to top 10 of the world's leading game, casual game portals, and uh, last year we received uh, Great Games Awards as the best sim tycoon game. Hits remain hits. And if you have good games, they will be successful in different markets. So, there also can be some problems with the billing, because uh, in Russia, most of the payments are still made via SMS, because uh, not everybody has a plastic card yet, but you know, the situation is, changing, and um, we know how to deal with it. And in several years, it will be all the same. Especially those developers who, for example, have great experience of surviving in a hazardous Facebook environment, well, they will feel pretty comfortable on the Russian social networks as well. There are some cultural differences, as we saw, but they are not that prominent. And as for language, for example, you just need a very professional localization team and a couple of native speakers who can make proofreading. So what you need, you just need to know what to do and how to do. So probably you just need a strong Russian partner who can give you, sometimes just give you a piece of advice, where to go, what is better, what is worse, and all this stuff. So I want you to remember several things. First of all, there are many internet users in Russia. 
There are many gamers in Russia. Actually, there are more gamers than in Germany. There are gamers in Russia who actually pay for video games. There are many of them. There are 20 million gamers who already have the experience of paying for video games. The market is growing very, very fast. And though we have some differences, though there can be some problems, well, everything can be solved and the differences are not that huge. That's mostly it, but um, I have one more thing for you. Well, everybody here at this conference has some relation to game development. Well, I don't want to say that you are game developers, but uh, well, you know, when, for example, I'm asked what I do for a living, and I say, okay, my company makes video games, that's it. So <laughs> I'm, uh, at, that same, at the moment, I'm associated with game developers, and actually people do not care what pos which positions we take. So once I asked a simple question, what do game developers look like? I asked a uh, casual game audience, which is mostly female, and uh, now I want to show a short video um, what they answered. Well, it should be kind of an IT guy who constantly works in some basements, well, you know, they always look like freaks, like real freaks. They definitely have long and dirty hair. Because they are too busy making games. And they usually live in their own world. And, uh, and uh, this world gives them ideas about video games. Well, I guess it should be a man. I think it's a skinny man in glasses. Perhaps very smart and living in his own world. He should know what players need to like a game. Well, a young guy, maybe about 20 or even about 17 years old, maybe somewhere between 17 and 27, I think. Maybe a person of some free profession, maybe a programmer who is bored to solve some intellectual tasks. So he decided to entertain himself and others. Ordinary people, no special features. I also think they are ordinary. They look like archaeologists, but with computers. They have beards, greasy hair and sweaters. And they have crumbs in their beards. Well, frankly speaking, I don't think they sit in offices. Well, you know, they wear jeans and they don't take care of their appearance. They are immersed in virtual worlds. Perhaps their hair is not well done and really washed. I'm sorry, but that's what I think. I don't know, they can look different. They have long hair, I guess, and it's not washed. What do game developers look like? Well, maybe in glasses? I don't know. I think a developer is a young guy in jeans and sneakers. I don't know, something like that. Maybe bosses wear suits. Others prefer to dress casually. They're definitely young guys. Yes, they're like very simple young guys. I think it can be a man either with long hair or bald or with short hair. Or he can look real macho, whatever. It's a difficult question. I think developers can be different. Well, I think they wear... Casual clothes. Casual, you know, comfortable and all this stuff, but not cheap. Sometimes, on a special occasion, they might put on a trendy, trendy outfit. I imagine guys hunched over at their computers wearing big glasses. I guess they look like uh, freaks, pretty weird, no suits, no, perhaps they just don't want to look like others, they don't look like typical people. I think he has a mid-length hair, curly hair, or he even maybe has trendy dreadlocks. Well, he definitely has some weird style. Now please, look at me, look at each other, and please, do not let stereotypes drive your business. That's it. Thank you very much.